Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Power Utility ESCOM this week briefed the media on the state of the electricity system ahead of summer. Natasha Woodendahl tells us more. Hi Natasha. Hi. The Power Utility's nine point power generation plan is said to be on track and yielding positive results. Yes, that's right. They're saying that obviously, I mean, with the challenges that ESCOM has been having lately, I mean, their operational, structural and financial challenges, which are no secret, um, they developed the nine-point plan to try and uh, progress or make some progress in the utility to actually get it back up and running. Um, in the latest state of the system um, briefing that they did, they said that they're actually making progress now. Um, there has been some units that have been brought back online. Um, they've used less diesel as well, con considerably less diesel than what they thought they would have. They've um, stopped load shedding. I mean, they've got 160 five days now, um, consecutive days of no load shedding. So there does seem to be some progress. In terms of trying to actually mitigate any potential challenges that they have in the future, current and future actually, um, they're focusing on fixing new plants. They're focusing on fixing human capital. Um, they've taken off their hiring freeze and actually trying to put in place um, human cap uh, capital for critical positions that are absolutely necessary. Um, they're preparing for increased diesel use or turbine use. Um, they're reducing emissions. That's a new one that they've put in. Um, they're fixing their coal stockpiles, which they have done considerably well at the moment. Um, they're fixing outage durations, partial losses and boiler tube leaks, uh, fixing units on long-term force outages and fixing full load losses and trips. Those are the focus points that it has in place at the moment. Um, in terms of uh, contributions by commercial and non-commercial units, um, there are three non-commercial units from Medipi and Kasili that have delivered more than a thousand megawatts um, during the last the state of the system period, which covers winter. Um, they've had Kasili Unit 3 synchronized to the national grid in April. They've had the Medipi Unit 3 um, reaching commercial operation in July. And Medipi's unit, Medipi's unit 1 was actually synchronized in August last week on the 27th. And that one was quite a significant milestone for ESCOM because it meant that for the first time, all six units were online at the same time. Um, and as I said, Creole Unit 2 and Mutler Unit 5 were returned to service. And during the winter period, the generation unit breakdowns were actually maintained at below 9,500 megawatts. What is the situation with regard to coal stocks? Well, ESCOM has at the moment recovered quite a bit from their dilemma that they had a few months ago where I think it was 10 of the 15 coal power stations were running out of stock. At that stage, the 10, 10 of the power stations were at below the prescribed NURSA grid code um, regulations or requirements, should I say. Um, five of them were below uh, 10 days, which means it was a critical state um, at that point uh, that they could actually run out of coal. Um, as of September 2nd, uh, the coal stock levels of most of the power stations, except for uh, Madupi and Kasili, were, were at 50 days. So they managed to actually increase that considerably. Um, and they actually still maintained at healthy levels now, except for one power station, which is Creel. That's still below the NURSA grid code requirements. So Creel um, is sitting at a current uh, stockpile of 15.6 days, but by the end of the year, they say it will be on par with the other stations, or at least above the grid code um, requirements. Um, in terms of the quality as well, they are still focusing on coal quality. Um, so that's a focus point now going forward once they've stabilized their stock days. And uh, in terms of water or any type of weather adverse conditions that they worried may affect the stockpiles, they have got in place um, a couple of measures to mitigate that. What is the outlook in terms of load shedding in the summer period? ESCOM is pretty optimistic that there's going to be no further load shedding. But in saying that, they're also quite open about the fact that while they're confident there's going to be no load shedding, there's always that possibility there will be. Anything could go wrong. At the moment, they're still maintaining their current streak of no load shedding. They, their current outlook is, as it stands, it's, it's, they won't have any load shedding. They've put in place for the next several months um, plans to actually try and mitigate any potential threats to load shedding. Um, it has become their number one priority. So they are, for the summer months, planning um, for 5,500 megawatts capacity to be maintained um, during the actual summer months. They'll take that offline. Um, and they will aim, their aim is to keep their unplanned um, outages or breakdowns below 9,500 megawatts. 
it's that that is the minimum that they need to do to actually prevent load shedding. However, they have put in three scenarios in case. Um, so the lowest scenario, the best case scenario, which they believe they will maintain, is that breakdowns will be below 9,500 megawatts. However, should it actually increase um, during the period to be between 9,500 megawatts and 10,500 megawatts, they do put out the scenario that they will have to use some extra diesel um, and that they're not likely to be any load shedding, but there is an increased risk of it. In terms of anything breakdowns above 10,500 megawatts, the um, generators will be running at full steam and there will be load shedding. As much as they would try and mitigate that, it, it could be unavoidable. The, the demand that they're expecting is about 30,000 megawatts and um, they're busy trying to encourage consumers still to use less electricity to try and be more conservative when it comes to saving energy um, because they want to try and avoid the use of obviously extra diesel and during the period they're trying to avoid having to force load shedding on it but they're going to be trying to maintain as much as possible. The risks that they've got in place in addition as well, I mean there's quite a few risks that could lead to load shedding. One of them could be new trips and plant breakdowns, um, which is obviously unexpectedly um, one of part of their scenarios over there. Uh, full load losses, partial load losses, um, slips and major incidents, adverse weather um, that could contribute to an increase in unplanned losses. Um, any macro factors such as protests um, or strike action that could further impact plant performance. And then obviously excessive use of emergency um, resources such as diesel and hydropower, um, increased theft and vandalism, which is an increasing problem for ESCOM at the moment. And yeah, that's about, that's about it. They're optimistic, but they're not going to rule it out. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News Daily Email Newsletter.